So let's have a conversation about hard drives. Or maybe about apples. Or maybe about power supplies. I'm not sure. This cool little thing is an Apple Profile. The Apple Profile is a 5 megabyte hard drive with a custom controller card that could be used with an Apple II or an Apple Lisa. I picked this up by accident. And uh, this accidental purchase uh, actually was kind of cool and it had some very interesting stuff in it. Now, while it had interesting stuff in it, it also is from the early 80s. And as such, while I was transferring this interesting stuff uh, into another machine, it started smoking while I was on camera in a meeting at work. And it's been sitting on a shelf since. And I would like to see what's going on. My guess is it's a reefer. But the only way I'm going to find out is by opening this thing up. So that's what we're going to do today. This is a standard Apple design. Probably help if I put it the right side up. It is the 5 meg model. Uh, we have a, our standard connection port here, standard power in, power switch. That's all she wrote. Now I've never taken one of these apart. But it looks like these screws are also going into the case, and so these panels have to be removed. And then on the underside, uh, there's one screw missing, and then we have one, two, three, four. Uh, and my fear, of course, is that all of these other ones are also involved. So we're going to do a little process of elimination. So where I'm going to start is where it's closest to the surface. So I'm going to do these two, um, and I'm going to do those back panel ones, and then we'll mess around a little bit and see what comes off. Screws are very loose. Delicate instrument. Handle with care. Alright. Let's do a little test here. This panel just kind of comes right out. You can see over here, this panel just kind of drops out. So does this one. Uh, this one might need more screws. Unless it's hinged. I just don't want to break this. So here's the inside of the profile. Um, we have the very large disk unit here, and it's a Seagate ST506. So it's literally every other hard drive out there. It's kind of cool. Um, the main logic appears to be right here, which is above an independent power supply unit. So that means I have a logic board to take out before I can take a look at this power supply. On the bright side, looking around here, um, there's no obvious damage to this board at all. So whatever the smoke was that I saw coming out of here wasn't on here. So that's a good start. Really? One screw? Yeah, one screw. And then just these little annoying boys here. desire to scratch this board. If you look, this is like a, like a hand laid out board. A very old school apple. And uh, I think it was supposed to be made in the USA, but they scrubbed that out. It's kind of funny. 
Okay, so now we have the power supply unit itself. That is very clearly attached to the bottom of the unit. So we still do have to take out those remaining screws. So that's very likely going to be these four. Now I'm just gonna support this underneath once I get to the last couple. So what you can't quite see here, and what I'll try to have you see, is uh, over here, you've got four screws here in this back metal plate. These are also quite tight. So that came out fairly easily. So we're going to pull away this component and this hard drive unit. And we're going to talk about this shiny boy, which the amount of reflection my camera really hates. So in this, we have one, two, three, four. Looks like four screws. Under no circumstances. Looks like this guy is also load bearing. So, look at this power supply. Looks like we have a Aretha here, smaller here, here, and here. Over here are the big guns, here, 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 and then right here is our nasty one. So that one is cracked apart. So that is definitely our smoker. Um, the rest of this actually looks really good. Our caps don't have any obvious bulging, our large caps. Um, transformer looks fine. Um, over here as well, no signs of it going. These reefas as well, are actually pretty chill. So it really looks like this point one is what exploded and you can see this coloration here where everything went downhill. So it's possible that by just replacing this big guy it should be okay. I find it interesting that this guy is so much bigger than this even though they're both 0 0.01 microfarad. So the question is how far do I want to go with this? What's really funny is I just did an Apple IIe power supply, and a lot of this layout actually looks really familiar. I had to rotate this and then come, have it come out. And now the whole thing wants to come apart. So that is going to be a problem for future Nick.
So in this case, line is on the bottom, neutral is going into the switch. These just pull right off of the switch. Maybe. and then neutral to that plug, and we are out. So standard power supply board at the time, and drawn refund question here is right here. Um, they've red marked the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a little fresh solder and then we'll see if we can pull this thing off. Okay, so it looked worse than it was. Literally just pulling this out. So, this is a reefer, 0 0.01 microfarad. So we're gonna grab a replacement. So what I have here is a Panasonic 0.1 microfarad plastic film capacitor. Slightly different pitch, but we're going to make that work. All that happened in the meantime here is spraying alcohol on and uh, using a a soft bristle brush and then q-tips and I got most of the big garbage out of the way it's not perfect it doesn't really have to be what else is interesting is that it didn't actually pop the fuse I'm just noticing because the 2e I was just working on absolutely did so these capacitors are not polarized you put them in any direction even better, this thing actually has holes for this one. So now with that, we have a nice tight fit on this. These other reefers look fine. And I'm sure those are going to be famous last words, but I'm not going to replace them until they need to be. So I'm going to get this put back together and we'll run a test. Okay, so it's dry fit right now. We've got the power connectors connected. We've got the edge connector connected. We are just softly resting in these little plastic guides. No screws. I have not screwed it into the case, except the power supply itself has been buttoned up. My only goal here is to hear this thing power up and a smoke test before I button it up. Because there could be more underneath here. So, power. Light. That sounds really good to me. I'm going to get the rest of this buttoned up. We're gonna get everything back where it belongs. And then we'll try it in a machine. So I've had this thing warming up for a bit because the profile takes forever before it's ready. But unfortunately my TGS is not accelerated. I don't think anyone wants to wait for this.
So look at that, it popped right up. So, definitely has some data on it. Um, but yeah, it's not complaining about anything. Um, so this person obviously used it. 3.3 megabit used with 1.3 meg free. I still find that hilarious, but I also lived it because I would have absolutely been thrilled if I had 5 megs of space to use on my Commodore. Where is it? Oh, right. June of 1987. That's cool. Well, alright. That's a working Apple profile. I think it's time to put this thing away. So, it's working. Another one is saved. I'm glad it's just a refa. Have a great one, everyone. See you next time.